of people watched on in horror, the doves were attacked in, in mid-flight. I mean, they, they just got attacked by these birds. One was a, 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 like a, a, a hawk or a vulture, and, and the other one, I, I, something, I, predatory birds. And it was like, wow, you know, in the Bible, doves, what do they represent? They represent peace. They represent the Holy Spirit. They, and, and it's like, what? What just happened there? And um, moreover, when you look at the fact of who this current pope is, which is a Jesuit priest, uh, I want to, I want to, okay, I just want to get your thoughts on that circumstance and, and then maybe some more thoughts that you have into uh, the, the pope himself, the current pope, which, which I'm interested to hear. Sure. Uh, well, first of all, yeah, indeed, I just put the link there in the chat room, and thank you very much, so everybody can read it for themselves. Yeah, I heard it with uh, just on the radio with the Hagmans just today. Yeah, in fact, this just happened over there in Rome. They released these two white doves, these children, and uh, basically what happened is uh, a seagull and a crow, a black crow, attacked <laughs> these uh, white doves that came out flying. Well, you know, when you do an action, any action, you light a candle or you light incense or whatever you do, there's an intention, a spiritual intention behind that. When they release these doves, there's a spiritual, and I can tell you this right now, nefarious intention behind that. Oh, they can look like white, beautiful doves of peace, but they're not birds of peace because the demonic element that's releasing the doves through the Pope okay, is demonic in itself. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, they can pose as sheep, and in reality, they're dressed, uh, they're, they're wolves in sheep's clothing. The same thing here. That crow represents the Holy Spirit destroying what the Vatican is doing, deceiving the nations, because crows are not necessarily bad. If you read your Bible, Isaiah, in Isaiah, it shows that, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, somebody was taken to a safe haven across the Jordan River. I read it the other day. Uh, mm -hmm. And the crows uh, gave him food. Uh, I don't remember which one of the... I, I, I believe that was Elijah. Elijah, thank you. Elijah was taken across the Jordan River, right, to safety because they wanted to kill him. And uh, the crows gave him food, you know, and sustenance because the Lord said so. So not seeing the crow is not the satanic element itself. The satanic element is the institution that has forsaken Christianity and has post as a Christian front for all the nations. Hmm. The Vatican is far from that. We have everything to understand that the Vatican is the capital of the international crime syndicate. Uh, when we talk about drugs, when we talk about arms, when we talk about wars and rumors of wars, the Jesuit operation inside the Vatican controls all warfare on planet Earth. I mean, there's no false flag event or event that might happen militarily if it's not first approved by the regional councils of the Jesuits and the general superior of the Jesuits who controls basically the Vatican itself and controls the Pope. Now that we got a Pope, this Pope Francis guy who now controls the, 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 the papal seat who, is, who passes off as a vicar of Christ has nothing to do with Jesus Christ at all, okay? He can dress in white all he wants, okay? He just had a meeting with Ratzinger, who is, uh, you know, want, he's a wanted man around the world. There's an arrest warrant in Europe for Ratzinger for uh, pedophilia, genocide, I mean, you name it. There's even accusations right now in Holland that he killed uh, little children in a hunting sport game, just like the Hunger Games. They, these people hunt children in the, in the, in the, oh, in the, black, in the black forests of uh, of. Uh, Holland. Let me just so, interrupt you for a second there, because yeah, if you want a um, testimony about this practice, uh, where where, where, they, where where certain elites they, they go out and hunt children, or or just pretend like they're going to hunt them and then catch them and, and I mean uh, for all, and we rape them. I mean this is just you know the book Transformation of America, Kathy O'Brien's book. Uh, she details that in her testimony that these things they happen not only to her but to her daughter and to other slaves that were involved in these, uh, you know, mind control projects and she was MK Ultra, uh, you, you know, monarch programming. But, like, it, this is not, um, like, you know, just a random story out there. It just, as a matter of fact, I know somebody personally that I met when I was in Tulsa that told me themselves, my dad took me to this thing and they stripped me and they made me, you know, 
do this and and they they shot guns and and then the one that got to catch me i, I mean this is horrible i was speaking face to face to an individual that testified to the exact thing you're talking about but anyway please continue yeah, well, not only that. I mean, we got uh, an eyewitness. She's 40 years old. She's all traumatized and all jittery and jumpy because of all the trauma she had. She was gang raped by Prince Bernhard and all these people, okay, oh. for years. And all these children are taken out into the woods. I mean, what happens in Belgium stays in Belgium, right? Until now, we know that all these victims are coming out from Belgium, from Holland, from Bavaria, and in and the Illuminati territory and they do rape these little, poor little children they traumatize them so much and then they kill them off okay um. so when we talk about the central institution of that has given the blessing to all these acts of torture and mayhem and they, they their inquisition which is still ongoing uh is the vatican the vatican is a sovereign state that mussolini gave sovereign status again with the Lateran Treaty, and that should have never have happened. And now we have a problem that nobody can touch them. And the Jesuit operation is, uh, all these are soldiers, they're highly trained intelligence assets, they control major universities, Fordham, they control Georgetown, I mean, look at all the presidents that have come out uh, in the United States, Clinton, Jefferson Clinton studied at Georgetown University, and they're all Jesuit operation. This is what Alex Jones never wants to talk about. He never wants to talk about the true problem behind the New World Order and the Illuminati, which is, in fact, the Jesuits. The Jesuits, look, the Illuminati fears the Jesuits. <laughs> that's how powerful the Jesuit operation has become. And now that they announced their New World Pope, because that's what, <laughs> that's what <laughs> it was announced on the headlines, okay, <laughs> in Ireland. Wow. I have, you know, I have the screenshot. It's on my website, New World Pope. And I'm going to put that link right now in the chat room so people can read my article. Okay, there it is. I wrote it in Spanish. I know you might not know Spanish, but put it into a Google translator and maybe Google will track why, why you are reading that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but this guy that they brought out of Argentina and put, a, put him as Pope, he's a Jesuit operation. Now, when we talk about the Jesuits, when we talk about uh, uh, Cardinal Spellman, who killed John F. Kennedy and Knights of, uh, of Columbus. Uh, when we see the operations unraveling, when we really get and go into depth into studying who these people are, when you, got, when you have people like Eric Von Phelps. Um, yes. Yeah, it is and, Eric and let's Von not Phelps. forget one more. I want to give you guys, uh, those of you listening, one more. A excellent book called 50 Years in the Church of Rome by Charles Chinicky. Now, this guy was a personal advisor to President Abraham Lincoln. You knew him personally. And in his book, it, he was a, a, a priest in the Catholic Church. He was in Canada for a long time. Then he came to the U.S. He knew the whole thing, the runaround, the Jesuits. He got to know him real good. He exposed in his book, which was written, I mean, he didn't publish it until his death. He said, I can't, it can't be published until I die because I would like to die a natural death. In his book, he exposed how the Jesuits were behind everything having to do with the civil war itself they wanted a separated nation they wanted north and they wanted south because if the nation was divided it was easier to conquer abraham lincoln became their number one opponent when he refused to allow the south to stay separate and to allow the south to become the permanent enemy of the north he united the nation and they had to take them out and they did and he exposes how they did it and all the things that, i mean when i read this book i said oh my god Gosh, and this guy was a true insider. I mean, he really was in the system, looking at it from an inside-out perspective. If if you want some history, uh, brief history lesson, get the book "50 Years in the Church of Rome" by Charles Chinicky. Amazing text. Anyway, please continue. Well, all these documents that have been very well documented. I mean, I got 700 slides about the Jesuits. I've read them all. I've gone into the books. I've read the books. I've read the Committee of 300. I've read everything you, you can read about the New World Order, okay? Wow. Yes, I've read everything for more than 20 years. On I've been on this, okay? And I finally came to understand, okay, all these people in the pinnacular structure of, of the world elite, uh, there has to be... Uh, like at a pyramid, you know, where you get to the apex of the pyramid, there has to be a person or a point, an appointed person on this planet that has direct connection with these dark energies or nefarious forces that are behind the operations of such evil and heinous crimes in the United States, like 55 million abortions, 
Okay, 55 million abortions or or many people don't know this, but let me tell you this. Uh, all the, the concentration camps in Poland that the Nazis built, mm. they didn't build them. They were built by the Jesuits. Oh, my gosh. Jesuit officers that. like Himmler. He was a Jesuit officer. Wow. Stalin was a Jesuit officer. Wow. The Jesuits are behind all of this. And they aligned a perfect pentagram uh, in in Poland with all the five major uh, extermination camps. Oh, my gosh. They they tied down the people. They killed more than 12 million Christians. People think about the 6 million Jews. What about the 12 million Protestants and Lutherans and Christians alike that were killed? What about the 50 million Russians that were killed in World War II? Everybody talks about the 6 million poor Jews. What about the rest of the people? Sure. These people were out to get Christians, no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. And it's not in the history books because they control education. And what I want to tell people is that these ley lines that were built at... Treblinka, and they were built at uh, uh, Krakow, and they were built at Auschwitz and all those places. All these ley lines connect independently to Dublin. They connect to um, other parts in France. Uh, I forget the name right now. They connect all the way to Tehran. They connect to Rome, where they practice the Saturnalia. And one of the missions of the Jesuits was to entrap these 18 million souls in these ley lines to really? give more demonic power to the, the power elite from Rome. Amazing. So when people tell me, oh, Alexander, you're, you're talking about conspiracy theories. These are not conspiracy theories because we have the evidence of the map itself wow. of them forming a perfect pentagram with the five. Look, just look at the death list, okay, that the Nazis use. IBM gave them the database systems of typing out every single person that went to those extermination centers mm. okay why would they make such a, a perfect list of people going in if they were just gonna kill them off anyway why wow. didn't they just use machine guns i'm gonna tell you why mm. i just did a series of eight shows on this in spanish i'm okay. gonna tell you why so you really get the hang of what evil truly is and how it's gonna gonna be unleashed upon this world and if you haven't accepted jesus christ in your heart right now and ask him to save your soul with his blood at Cavalry, I mean, you are totally fried, okay? And let me tell you why. Um, when we talk about these centers and the list that went into the, the very meticulous listing of the people that were going to be killed, and those lists are in possession of the United States government right now, I can tell you that. Because they still believe that there is demonic power and influence over all the events that happened back in, 19, in 1939 through 45. Wow. The th and one of the things that I want to share with people is that many people are trying to say there's new people. You know, Jeff Renz and all these people are coming out and saying, no, oh, you know, uh, the Holocaust never happened. Uh, it wasn't six million Jews. It was more like 350,000. And they were killed because there were so much pestilence and there were... Uh, uh, typhoid fever and all this and that at the concentration camps. That is false. Mm. Because the only way you can explain off the, the, the shackles on the, on the beds that they used uh, on the stretchers. They used these stretchers to transport the bodies. Okay. They tied them down alive with shackles mm. on the stretchers while they took them to the ovens. They burned them alive. Wow. They burned the people alive. The objective of the Holocaust was to burn people alive because they wanted to torment these souls. And let me tell you something else, because mm. you can't explain that off like, no, they were just getting rid of uh, the evidence or they were trying to, you know, get rid of disease. No, that is not true. They were burning them alive. How can how else can you explain the shackles? Yeah. If they were dead bodies, you wouldn't need shackles on the stretchers. I mean, that's a great point. Who in their right mind would use shackles on a dead body? I mean, really? Come on. <laughs> okay, because they were alive. And the other thing wow. that, that, that is just terrible in itself is that they would just put them in the oven for two minutes and then take them out what? and put them in the mass graves. And that was the operation. I mean, they... They redefined satanic manifestation, okay? The Jesuit operation. They designed everything that went on. Uh, Leukowitz and everybody, the Pope, Pope, uh, 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 I can't remember his name right now. I have to go into my notes, but uh, I mean, these people are so evil 
that the Illuminati is pale in comparison to what they are. And that's why Alex Jones never talks about them, because he would get sued for it or he would lose his uh, he would lose his uh, status. Hmm. They would not let him speak out openly about these things. Now, I'm going to I'm going to recommend a Web page if you want to continue researching. That is one dash evil dot org. OK, if you want to go into the deep research there and read for yourself, that Web page can show you what I'm talking about. And, and that I got to uh, commend these people. Yeah. For those of you that are listening to this uh, later on, that's o n e hyphen evil dot org o n e one. And after I did the research and I proved it for myself, these people are right on track. Okay, mm -hmm. right on track. And so once we do the research, we know that these people had to belong to these institutions for them to come out on the internet and publish this stuff. You can't make this stuff up. You cannot make pentagrams of evil up and align them with cities like Baalbek and Zurich and Odessa and Jerusalem. You cannot do that. You cannot do this at random. And we know that the Pope is uh, hell-bent on taking control of Jerusalem as well. So when we see this ecumenism and this new ch emergent church forming and everything bringing out and John Hagee coming out with his four blood moons, but John Hagee also saying, well, look, being homosexual is okay. Everybody's part of the f for th of the church of Jesus, right? Everybody can repent. Well, it's true. You know, they live in sin. But I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna support uh, what they're trying to do with this uh, pros proselytizing anti-heterosexual uh, uh, attitudes. And I'm not gonna defend the Jewish or or orthodox or orthodoxy uh, because it's in the Bible that I have to pray for Israel. Uh, people are confused which type of Israel we're talking about. And this is what really gets me. Because everybody's so pro-Israel. Have you really documented yourself and read what they have done to the Palestinian people? Until you come into terms with what the Zionist Rothschild Empire has done with that satanic flag of a country, then we can talk about Christianity. Because if you think you are Christian and you're supporting a country that has more abortions per capita than the United States, then you're... You're sorely mistaken when you're supporting a country and praying for a country that has the, the number one capital of homosexuals in the world, like like uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Where do you where, where do you think the word Sodom sodomy comes from? OK. And what did God do to these people at uh, Sodom and Gomorrah and other three cities back in the day? He destroyed them. And what's going to happen in the United States? God is going to destroy the United States because the United States is that emulation of the state of Israel itself. It's the great emulation of a, a, a great state that could have been and now turned its back on God. And what's what has it become? It has become great Babylon. And what's going to come? It's things, terrible things are coming. But not to you. If you're Christian, nothing's going to happen to you. You see? And that's what I don't get, Daniel. People are so in fear of what's coming. Hey, I'm celebrating that I'm going to the prison systems. Hey, I'm celebrating that I'm going to be taken out in the name of Jesus. Why? Because I know that Jesus already conquered this world for me. I know that I'm going to go up to heaven. I'm not afraid anymore. That's why I can speak openly about these things, and I'm not afraid. Hmm. And, and that comes back to the first point, uh, fear. Uh, you know, well, what, what kind of power is working in you? And, and, and here's the thing. Um, you know, <laughs> there's so much coming. I, I personally, this is what I feel like. I feel like God has an, an ace in the hole on some of these things. And um, I just don't know where they are or what it's going to look like. But it, it, you know, the way this unfolds is going to be really interesting, especially with the idea that um, I believe that God is raising up an army of people that are going to be able to pray and to do warfare. And, and see, because this is the thing. Everything we're looking at on the earth sphere, right? Well, you don't get this until you get into either uh, the dark side or the light side, God's side, Jesus' side. And you realize this is all being drawn in or pulled in from heavenly realms. Everything in the earth is literally a reflection of higher issues, laws, agendas, um, things that come into manifestation in the earth. And so when you have a group of people that learn how to pray and confront things in the heavens, well, then what you have is that it, there's a shift in the earth. It doesn't even make sense. Why? Because there are natural things, supernatural things. And when you begin to tap into the supernatural, natural laws become overridden by the power that you're tapping into. So you tap into Jesus. Yes, you can override Natural laws. And, and, and this is how miracles happen. You know, uh, while, while the church was praying for Peter in the prison, what happened? He was in shackles. What changed? 
the earth was shaken. The shackles broke off him and he walked out of the prison and to the house. They couldn't even believe that it was him. They thought it was his angel. Why did that happen? You know, did, did, did it just by chance an earthquake come and break off some change on his arm? This, this is ridiculous. I mean, um, I, may, I may be. No, that's, that's what happened. And God sent the angel and Peter, he got up and followed the angel out. And then he, he showed up. Anyway, uh, what I'm saying is, you know, th there's going to be some high level warfare that God is preparing people to do. And I believe that, you know, the, the conflict that's going to come into this earth as a result is going to be uh, really intense because, um, my goodness, you have some evil agendas. But you have, when you involve supernatural forces and powers, things change. Prayer, folks, if you remember one thing, take away one thing from this program. Prayer changes things. And God has not given you a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. L listen, uh, I want to get to blood moons because we haven't touched on that yet. I want to get to that before uh, we run out of time because I feel like we could just stay on this conversation and, and not get back to it. So what uh, – what, and, and honestly, I, I don't even know, folks. Uh, you know, I, I haven't gone into Alexander's research into this yet, and uh, I, I'm just as interested as any one of you to hear his perspectives on what the uh, blood moons might mean. Now, uh, for those of you that are listening, you might not be sure. What are blood moons? What, what, what's the significance? Um, well, here's the thing. Uh, the Bible does rep reference the like things passages say the moon will turn to blood, the sun will grow dark. You know, it, it puts some of these imagery in passages dealing with the last days. Um, and okay, in the years 2014 and 2015, here are the facts. The facts are that on uh, April 15th, 2014, that's this year, that's Passover, uh, October 8th, 2014, that is the Feast of Tabernacles. On April 4th, 2015, again, Passover, and 9, uh, 28 or September 28th, 2015, um, also the Feast of Tabernacles, you will have what they call a blood red moon, which is really a lunar eclipse. Now, the significance is that you have four of them in a two-year period, all landing on Jewish holy days or feast, uh, feast days um, in their calendar. And while it's happened before in history, Every time it has happened, significant events have been historically noted to occur. Uh, for instance, in the 1400s when it happened, it was around the same time that Christopher Columbus, quote-unquote, discovered America. Uh, it happened shortly after Israel became a nation in 1949. It, 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 it always comes along with huge, uh, di different kinds of, you know, crazy shifts in world history. So, so anyway, there's a little bit of background. Now, Alexander Backman, what are your thoughts Oh, okay. I got, I got, I got the mute button. I got it off. Okay, okay. Basically, what's going on here, Daniel, is very simple to understand. Okay, a, a red blood moon is not that strange at all. I mean, it's a common event. They're they're called uh, lunar eclipses. Okay, and sometimes they get really red because the umbra or the penumbra, the shadow of the Earth upon the moon with the sun behind it, creates this effect, which uh, basically, in all terms, and uh, it, the moon looks red. Okay, yes, there is a there is a fact that uh, we are 